Alright guys, this is going to be a long one, so I'll try to keep my spiel kind of short. I will be at the Jaggers Battle for 7 game up in Kansas City on October 15th, 2023. I will be bringing stickers with me, so if you want one, just come up, say hey, I'll have them for you guys. I'll be playing for the Martians as I normally do, and uh, I appreciate everybody for watching the video. So let's get to it. Okay guys, I wasn't actually going to do this, but I've been out of the house all day, and I feel like breaking something apart. So... I'm going to cover basically the ins and outs of the J4 Torque. Um, there's really not a whole lot of um, video breakdowns of a Torque. J4 slash Josh Corey did a whole line, but they're in bits and pieces. And um, he doesn't really get too terribly in depth with it. He does well enough for me to figure my way around, but um, just in case anybody else wants to kind of get in a little bit deeper, um, we'll, we'll do that. Um, so I don't know if they're going to make new torques or release any more torques or anything like that. So basically what comes in my box might be different from what comes in potentially new ones and older ones. Um, but I'm basically going to show you what this one came with. It has all the factory goodies um, as far as I know and it has a couple of extra little bits and pieces. So whenever you open up your torque box you have obviously a torque. Um, this one is mine. This is actually my personal torque. Um, it's not a repair. It's not something like that. Um, I did play with this and contrary to popular belief, techs don't just take people's guns out and use them. Some do um, and I don't think that's uh, that's okay. So this is my torque. I wouldn't use this in a game if it wasn't, but this is mine. Um, it is a dust white slash, I believe they called it sky blue. Um, not really sure how many dust whites they made, but this is one of them. Um, HK grip is not included. Mine came with a black one, but um, I put a white one on there. Um, these don't come with one. I think some of them came with a type of front front grip, um, but this one didn't. Um, it came with this one that the previous owner put on. So, pull out the torque. Set it off to the side. Set it on top of the trash can, not in it. You have a foam insert, two foam inserts. And here's what else comes with it. So mine came with some mystery O-rings that I have no idea where they go. Um, these were taped to the top of the box, which is why there's a tape line here. Um, don't know what these are, I haven't used them. I'm not going to use them. Um, if for whatever reason I figure out what they're for and they benefit me in some way, I may use them, but I don't really plan to. They give you a full toolkit, which is awesome. This is a full standard toolkit. I'm not going to use it. I have my Bondus keys that I really like using, but it's really nice to see that they gave you an entire freaking set of Allen keys. Every single Allen key you will ever need for anything is right here. And they're ball end, so they didn't skimp on quality with this. A giant bag with pretty much one of every screw you're going to need, probably a couple of each, um, a new power button slash I button, um, actually a couple buttons, um, new soft tip, ah, hand shaking, a couple new detents, new seals, stuff like that, even more spares and detents, which I'm pretty sure this bag was a, uh, was like an addition to what the previous owner had. I'm pretty sure this is what you actually get. You have a barrel sleeve, which is actually a really nice barrel sleeve. It's neoprene. It's got a nice elastic band. Um, I'm not going to use it just to preserve it. That's just me. You get a huge thing of grease. Unfortunately, my lid broke, but you have a whole thing of grease, which is nice. They actually send you with factory grease. And then you get your barrel. This is what I consider to be the predecessor to the PAT barrels. As you can see, the porting is pretty much identical. Um, it doesn't have that goofy step in it like what the PAT barrel has, um, but that back lip here is the same. They didn't cut this out and they added a little bit of flaring there. Um, the dust finish on this is way more aggressive 
Um, it has almost like an Azodin uh, dust finish to it. If you've ever owned an Azodin, you know what that means. And uh, this is a 685 bore. So they were actually sending out decently sized barrels at the time they were releasing this particular batch, which um, with this having the sci-fi board and the sci-fi eye board, this kind of tells me that it is a, um, a batch at least 1.75, I believe is what they call it, or batch two. Um, so it's one of the newer ones. It's not one of the older ones, but so that's everything that comes with the torque or what came with my torque. So put everything back. Shut the box. Get it out of the way. Pardon my French. Oh yeah. So the torque. It's a very interesting marker. Um, if you guys watched the gameplay video, you guys heard it shooting. It sounds very strange for a stack tube. Um, that's because this is not a poppet, it is a spool valve. When we break it open, I'll show you um, the lower tube. It's very interesting. I really like how they made the gun work. Um, there are a couple weird little finicky things, and um, it definitely makes its presence known. It's not the quietest gun I've ever shot, but it's not like older ego loud, um, but there's definitely a sound to it. Um, the front grip here, this is actually not a regulator. This is just a, basically an expansion chamber. Um, your regulator is actually housed in your ASA. You have an adjuster right there, similar to like the die guns. Um, a weird little flippy thing, which actually is kind of hard to, uh, to turn whenever you have a bottle on it, but if you get enough leverage on it, it'll turn and it's not gonna come off. A lot like my freaking impulse kept doing, which is really annoying. Um, trigger is actually really nice. And they also released STL files, so you could 3D print more triggers. Um, the only weird thing, I'll get into it here in a minute, is there's not like a trigger return spring anywhere. Um, mine came with a weird... I don't have it anymore because it broke off whenever I got shot in the frame. Um, it had like a weird 3D printed thing inside of it. Kind of like a weird flap. Um... And I don't really know what it was doing because it was actually sitting above the trigger and um, it didn't really seem like it was letting the trigger come all the way forward. So I don't really know what the point of it was, but um, again, mine broke. So I'm actually going to make another one with a piece of this Lexan because I don't really know what else to do. They do actually offer a um, magnet trigger um, service. So I could send this in and get the magnet trigger thing done to it, and I might. Um, I actually do want to use this a couple more times, get a really good feel for it, and then I will decide if I want to do that or if I really like how it um, feels coming off the micro switch. This gun is mine. It's not going anywhere. I'm not going to sell it. Of course, I say that, and then like a year later, I'm going to sell it. But um, as potentially for right now, this gun is mine. I don't really plan to sell it. I've wanted a torque for a really long time. And uh, now that I have one, I really don't want to sell it. Um, but we'll kind of have to see about that magnet trigger thing. The feed neck, hilariously enough, is Inception Designs, which these didn't actually have a standardized feed neck. They were coming with Inception feed necks. I believe later versions came with their own in-house made feed necks. But this one was part of the batch that had the Inception feed necks. Um... I don't really know what else to go over without actually breaking into the gun. So um, I guess we'll probably just start doing that. So it comes apart in three pieces. You have your frame, your mid body, and your upper body. Your eyes here are actually held in place via a board, a lot like an ax. Um, and it actually, the eyes look very similar to ax eyes. Um, but there's a board sitting right here that actually houses them and then there's wires connecting into the board and whatnot. So we're going to go ahead and pull the internals out and then we'll basically pop the frame off, basically break the whole gun down and uh, put it back together so you guys can see what the torque is made of. 
it's very interesting. I really like it. I think it's really cool. So, full Durham bolt, two O-rings. This is actually interesting. It uses a hall sensor in conjunction with the eye sensor, with the eye board. Um, and it basically, as soon as the hall sensor meets the eye board, it shuts your dwell off, recycles your solenoid, and brings the bolt back. So realistically, this thing doesn't actually have a standardized dwell. Um, they run it at a dwell of, I think, between like 18 and 20 milliseconds. And But as soon as the bolt hits the eye board, um, it, basically, it shuts off. The dwell just totally resets, the solenoid resets, and all that stuff. So it's very strange how they made the, the marker cycle. But the bolts are using Exalt soft tips along with um, just, it's their bolt. There's nothing that you can actually swap it out with because you have to have that hall sensor. So this is a proprietary bolt. There are no aftermarkets unless you make one and somehow make your hall sensor work with it. So we'll actually get into the real, what they consider to be the selling point of the torque, which is the spool valve design. Again, it's really strange. It's very interesting how they made it work. So you pull this out. This is your spool guide. It looks very similar to like an axe. And then we're actually going to need the bolt for this part. And there is the actual spool, I guess if you want to call it that. And then inside there is a central valve that we'll be able to pull out. So like I said, this works kind of similar to an axe um, in that you have this thing riding on a stem. Um, I can't really think of any other gun that uses something like this. I mean, it, it's a really strange design. And again, I, I genuinely don't have anything to compare it to off the top of my head. But um, it's very interesting how they made it work. So you have your actual guide here. You have your spool. I keep wanting to call it a ram, but it's not a ram. It functions like a ram, except it doesn't hit a poppet. It hits. It opens against a valve, and the valve lets air in. Um, and then there's a spring that actually returns the spool back to its resting position. So it's kind of like a weird air forward spring return spool it's kind of like a phaser spool thing it it makes no sense but it works it i wouldn't say it works the greatest but it works um one thing that i did notice whenever i got mine is this part here was insanely rough um and it wasn't easy to actually move it when there was no air in the gun. I couldn't cycle the bolt back and forth by hand very easily. Um, it was very rough. So I actually took mine and polished it. Um, I was very careful and polished it out. And it moves a little bit better. It's not perfect because they are still brand new O-rings. So it's kind of tight. Um, but it is what it is. They'll break in eventually. And hopefully we'll be able to uh, be able to get the regulator pressure down. Which we will talk about here in a minute as well. But it's a very interesting design. Very strange how they made it work. It's like a phase or spool thing. So we'll set that off to the side. I need a paper towel because that had grease all over it. So now we will get into the brains of the torque, which is the sci fi board. This is actually the first marker I've ever used that had a sci fi board in it. Um, and I honestly, I don't really get the hype behind the sci-fi boards. I don't understand why people are like creaming their spinach over a board that you can adjust via Bluetooth. It's, it's cool in theory, but I mean, I don't know. It just seems like an extra step in doing something that should be relatively simple. Yeah, you don't have to use... LEDs, blinks, flashes, and counting, and math, and shit like that, but still, it's just one extra step. You have to pull your grip off, hit the button, pair it up with an app on your phone, change all your settings, make sure it's saved. It's To me, it's, it's kind of a pain in the ass, but since I basically run my gun in one mode with one rate of fire cap, I don't mess with the dwell on anything. It's all basically preset, and I never touch anything. 
it's kind of like a pointless thing to me, I guess. I don't, I don't know, maybe I'm just an asshole and I'm oversimplifying it. There's some mystical voodoo thing going on in here, but to me personally, I don't get it. Um, but, you know, some people really like overly complicated technical stuff. I do to an extent, but not when it comes to electronics. I like overly complicated mechanical stuff. So, here is your sci-fi board. These are actually... Um, able to be flashed from your PC. Um, my PC really hated downloading the client to be able to actually update this. It wanted to flag it for every kind of spam you could possibly have. So maybe the developer of said board should uh, look into that. I'm just saying that's just me. But uh, yeah, my I finally was able to convince my PC by sweet talking it enough to let me download the client to update the board. So this actually does have the the newest current version of the software needed to actually operate. Oh, why is my hand shaking? So, we're going to go ahead and pull the board out, because if we're going to take the whole gun apart, we're going to take the whole gun apart. So you have four harnesses here. You have your solenoid, your eye wires, and you have two batteries. This does have built-in batteries, which are charged via this USB port right here. So very carefully grab the connector and pull your wires out. You kind of got to jam your finger in there to get the eye wires out. They're a little bit hard to get at. Same with the battery. Battery one and battery. Come on, buddy. Get out of there. Try not to grab it by the wire. It's really hard. Battery... Come on, dude. Battery two, damn. Okay. So now, take our, I believe it's a 332nd Allen key and undo the screws. Make sure that you don't actually torque these down too terribly tight whenever you uh, put them back in. However, mine did actually try to walk off whenever I was trying to use it. Last weekend, I came home, had to get in and clean out because I got shot in the trigger frame. And uh, notice that the board screws are kind of loose. So um, just make sure that your board's not going to come come loose while you're trying to use it. Very carefully lift it out. There is a metal tab here that this kind of sits behind. So you need to be really careful when you pull this out that you don't bend your micro switch flap. So if you do that, your SOL. And here we have access to the two batteries, battery one, and battery two. Again, these are just built-in LiPos. They're pretty small. They don't really add a whole lot of weight. So we'll set those back in. And then you have a central battery tray. Now, the first time I took this apart, I was sitting there trying to figure out how to get the damn battery tray out. There is a screw in the back plate that actually fits you got to watch out for your buttons too. That actually slots into a small space in the battery tray. So for us to get that out, we have to remove the back plate, which is a 1 16th Allen key. Unfortunately with this marker, this was before the age of standardized one size Allen keys. So you kind of got to use every single freaking Allen key in your kit, whether you want to or not. Come on, buddy. Oh, that would be why. Out comes your backplate. They do have an STL file as well with the backplate, so you can 3D print your own backplates, custom colors, designs, what have you. Um, to put it back in, we will have to talk about that because there's a little tab that has to go in first. And then you have your little LED transfer plasticky thingy. So make sure you don't break that off by accident. And out comes your battery tray. I'm going to put the batteries back in. That way I don't lose them. There is a trough here. So when you set battery number one in, make sure that it goes into that slot. Battery number one, up like that. It doesn't really matter what way you put them in, but the wires are pretty bent in this one, so I'm just going to follow how they went in prior. So we'll set that off to the side, set the board off, set the grips off. Okay. And that'll gain us access to the two holes, or the two Allen heads, 
that hold the regulator slash ASA on. And again, that is another size Allen key. This is your one eighth. And mine came semi sort of pre-stripped, so I have to be really careful with the front one. And I did Loctite mine in place because I don't want this thing coming loose on me. Because if it does, it is game freaking over. So we'll pull screw number one out. Screw number two. Uh, full disclosure, I'm actually not going to pull the entire ASA apart because you need a incredibly tiny snap ring pl plier set to get that snap ring out of there. So if it doesn't leak out of the back of your ASA, you don't have to worry about it. But um, if it does, you're going to need a really freaking small pair of snap ring pliers to get that out. So small, I don't even own them. And off comes your ASA slash regulator. And the bottom there is your adjuster slash your reg seat, which is this guy. Make sure there's no dents, dings, nicks, scratches, holes, anything like that cut into it. Wipe a little bit of that crease off. And then you can remove your cam by unscrewing this, popping this off. This will slot right out. There's two O-rings on either side. If you get a leak out of either side, it'll be one of those two O-rings. I believe those are size 005s. I could be wrong. Um, if this had a manual, I'd be able to reference check, but it doesn't, so. And, uh, I can't really run the manual while recording a video, so I apologize. But, there is your regulator housing slash ASA assembly. Your actual regulator is this guy, right here. This is a topic. <laughs> so, inside of this regulator... For the tech people out there, you're going to be shocked. Inside the regulator is a shitload of grease. Why? Because that's how the regulator was designed. Um, it needs a lot of grease in there to basically keep the rig from seizing up. You will know that your rig needs relube whenever you air the gun up and you hear a squeak. It sounds like you basically stepped on a dog toy. Um, there needs to be a lot of grease in there. Um, so basically what I did was I took a, basically a brand new thing of pathogen super grease, full finger, smeared it in there, dropped the, dropped the piston in, aired it up, and basically let the loop move around how it needed to move. Um, that's why the piston is absolutely coated, the spring inside, everything inside is just covered in grease. The piston, it's, the, the red can itself is covered in grease. Um, it's a very grease happy regulator. Um, I don't really know how it makes me feel, but <laughs> it's a thing. It's interesting. Um, but that is basically your regulator. It's a spring, a piston, and the piston meets up against the reg seat in the adjuster at the bottom of the regulator. Um, one weird thing to note, these things really don't like being ran under 800 PSI output from your tank. Um, if you do, you're going to require a shim that some people say exist. I have, I can't find one on J4's website. Nobody really wants to talk about it. It's kind of like a forbidden fruit kind of topic. Um, I even posted about it asking where to buy one and basically everybody's like, oh, they're working on it. We'll get parts. They basically made excuses as to why they don't have the, the, the nylon spacer, which is fine because the gun works with my tank. Um, it just seems to me like the output is a lot, the reg output seems to be a lot more than what it really should be. Um, and that will in turn affect how the gun shoots because this does not have a secondary regulator. It's all regulated from one solid state thing, which is this. So to put your regulator back together, there are three O-rings. You have two right here and then you have the one. This is actually a standard size 15, I believe. That's actually what goes into the ASA body. These two will slot into the frame right there. And that's all I'm going to say about the regulator. We're not going to need that anymore because we're not going to be breaking into it anymore. Part on one more time. So, to take the frame off. There are two screws that you're going to need to make sure that you have access to, which is your front frame screw here 
and your rear frame screw. They were actually really smart in designing this with everything basically being covered by something. So you can't get to the rear frame screw from the top without removing your guide. You can't get to the screw that holds the top body together without removing the bolt. And you can't get to your front frame screw which holds everything together without removing your barrel. So they basically hid all the screws making it as seamless as they could without basically doing like caps or uh, captured screws kind of like the Bob Long Victory frames which are a pain. So to get the frame off you're going to need your 1 16th once again or your 1 8th once again. Pop that sucker off. Also a quick note I'm not going to pull the trigger out. Um, it's actually not just a single screw it's a compression fit trigger between two grub screws. So basically if you pull both the screws out, you have to center the trigger between the two and it can kind of be a pain. I basically used the trigger frame itself as a reference. Um, the frame wasn't on whenever I put it on, but I looked down, down the gap, down the trigger, made sure that it was in the middle of the trigger frame. And that basically told me that the trigger was centered and it was able to move freely. So as you can see, removing the the, the frame and everything is going to be a bit interesting because of all the wiring. So pull your solenoid wire down. Make sure your eye wires are safe and straight. And carefully pull up the solenoid and the solenoid. Oops, there we go. The solenoid and the switch housing will kind of rub up against the frame, as you can kind of see. So it is a little bit of a tight fit, but once you get it off there, it's usually pretty easy. And then, like I said, this had some kind of strange, weird flap that ended up breaking off. Again, I don't really know what the point of that was unless it was supposed to sit under the trigger and push it up. Mine was sitting on top of it and uh, wasn't letting the uh, trigger come all the way up. So I'm going to basically make another one here later out of this Lexan and hope that it, uh, basically hope that it works um, or I'll go ahead and do the magnet mod, but we'll kind of have to see. Set that off to the side. We'll set these two screws off to the side. There is an O-ring in the frame. And then you have your transfer piece right there. Which of course I don't have any damn pliers out. So we'll take these guys, carefully grab that and pull it up. This is actually what connects your frame to your main body. These are two size 006 O-rings. And it's not sided, so it doesn't really matter which way they go in, just so long as they go back in. Oops. And they have grease on them, which I need to make sure they have grease. Um, J4 basically says these things can run on any kind of grease um, that you dare put in them. Um, I've been running it with just the stock J4 grease. I am actually going to swap around and use my grease, which is my napalm grease that I've been still kind of testing and playing around with. Um, it's been working really, really good so far in every gun I've put it in. I've put it in the axe, I've put it in the ripper, um, put it in the impulse, I've put it in basically everything besides this. So I'm actually going to uh, lube the internals with napalm and uh, see how well it works. I believe it's going to be a good, a good thing. But for this little guy, I don't want to use experimental grease. I want to use grease that I know works. So I have some Immortal Air Nectar. This is good stuff. Um, typically, I use it in tank rigs. God, why is my hand all shaky? But um, whenever I need something to seal and be stationary for a really long time, um, Nectar Grease is a great lubricant for that application. Just set it in there, push it down, make sure it's all the way at the bottom, and that's all you got to do. And just make sure that this O-ring doesn't go anywhere because that will actually seal against your air chamber here. Set that off to the side, I don't need that anymore. Actually, I might need that later. So, if the board is the brain of the gun, the solenoid and the switch are arguably the beating heart of the torque. Um, this uses a solenoid which also activates a switch. Um, there are a couple different iterations of the switch that they have. 
Um, they have a new one, which I ordered. I'm still waiting on it to come in, but um, I do believe it will show up. But basically, to get this off, we need to take our... So that is the sucker. 3.30 seconds, 5.64, so I don't know. The black, over, black, black Allen key. And loosen up the screws on the switch housing right here as well. And off comes your solenoid and your switch. There are two O-rings here. Make sure you don't lose those. Those are metric, um, and I don't know exactly which size they are, but they are metric, so don't lose them. You do have spares in your spare parts kit, but just don't lose them, and you won't have to use them. Then you can take the same Allen key and carefully loosen up the screws that hold the Mac solenoid on. And I do believe they still sell these solenoids. I might be wrong, and I probably am, but if you do have a solenoid go out, I do believe J4 still has some. Again, I don't really know if they're actually still producing torques or in or are in the midst of producing torques. I'm not sure. Hopefully they are because these guns are awesome, but you never know. So you have two O-rings that sit here, which have a funny habit of coming off and following the solenoid. So just make sure those go back where they need to go. Just like that. So inside of here is your actual switch. This is basically, this is the beating heart of the torque. The solenoid is kind of like the capillaries. It transfers airflow from one side of the switch to the other. This is what actually makes the thing go. So without this switch, this gun does not work. I figured that out whenever my cap came loose and I wasn't getting spring tension back to the switch. So to get this off, we have to be really careful. The older versions have a hex broached cap and these had a really bad tendency of stripping. The new ones actually have a slot in them for like a flathead or even a quarter. So um, whenever that comes in, you'll usually know if it has the newer one, if it has the new cap in it. Since this one has the older cap, this means that it's one of the older versions. So very carefully reach in there. And I did have to lock tight mine in place because it did come loose whenever I was shooting it. Lost spring tension and the marker wouldn't recock. So out comes the cap and a spring. Pull your spring off. The cap is now stuck, of course. There we go. So you have your spring and your cap. And then you have your switch, which you need a really tiny Allen key to push out. Because usually it'll stick. Actually, no, I might be able to get it. Oh. Right there. Come on, buddy, get out of there. There we go. And there's your switch. This is what actually controls how the which way the the marker cycles. So I actually made a bit of a rookie mistake whenever I rebuilt this. I actually used O-rings that were slightly too big, which was causing drag in the Housing, which was actually making the marker need more pressure to cycle properly. So, rookie mistake, I use size 006, these are actually 005s. They are a right pain in the freaking ass to change, by the way. Um, I ended up actually just taking a pick and cutting the O-rings off, and then fighting to get the new ones on. So, if you ever have to replace these, may God have mercy on your soul. Um, and you're probably going to need at least two or three of these to get through, because it is a pain. So, that is your switch housing. Again, don't lose those two O-rings. Don't lose the two O-rings on the back of the housing. Set those guys off to the side, along with all the little bits and pieces. And now we get to some of the interesting stuff. So we need to pull the eye covers off in order to get the top body to come apart as you can see there are a lot of screws to this marker so just make sure you try to keep them organized that way you don't lose them so these actually use their detents these are really actually smart detents these are what they call their bridge detents it's very similar to um, I, I 
dare I say, a Tipman detent in that it's made out of this nice soft rubber and over time these will kind of start to wear out but um, they're designed in such a way that um, they last for like ever and they're they're just a really smart detent um, I really like how they designed it it's just it's I can't say enough good things about how they designed the detent it sounds like something really stupid but from somebody who's seen detents like the Eclipse detents those weird little nubbin things when the bolt sits forward long enough, they bend. Um, with like Tipman detents, they sit far enough forward, they bend. Um, hell, like even older, like spring-loaded detents, after a while the springs will wear out or they'll rust or something like that. These, they're soft enough rubber where you don't have to worry about them losing memory. And you can just keep your bolt back and they won't have that problem. But they're such a smartly designed detent. I really like the design of the detent. Again, it sounds stupid, but for somebody... Who sees this kind of stuff all the time um it it really does actually make me kind of happy that there are smart designs coming out like that that's just a phenomenal idea so from here we basically only have a few more things that can come out which are the detents i don't know why i put that one back the front plug which is kind of a pain we'll actually have to remove the top body to get it off and then we have an eye wire, the board, and then the valve. So basically, in order to break this whole thing apart the rest of the way, you'll need your 1 8 Allen key. Try not to smash the eye wires. Loosen that guy up. Carefully lift that out, because your eye wire is going to want to come with it. Your eye wire can't actually come all the way through, because the harness is too big and the valve body sits right in the way. So just flip it over, pull your eye wires free. And again, this is using the Sci-Fi eye board, which is pretty neat. It Again, it's very similar to an axe, and I really like how they designed it. It's very smart. Um, this gun, this particular one has yet to break a ball. I have not broken any paint in my torque. I don't think I've seen anybody else break paint in their torque. Then again... There's really not a whole lot of videos of people using Torx, which is why I'm here breaking mine apart, so that way you guys can see how they come apart in one full sitting. Um, but yeah, supposedly these are designed in such a way that they just don't break paint. I haven't broken paint, I put some really bad paint through this last weekend. But they're basically saying you should only need to break into your eyes maybe once or twice a year. Um, again, that just depends on the paint quality, how your gun's shooting, um, the weather, paint quality, stuff like that. But we're basically gonna pull the eye board off, which is one tiny screw. And off comes the eye board. And that's it. Just get in there, kind of swab it out. I got a little bit of triflo up in mine, because I used some triflo on the bolt to try to uh, fix that kind of crappy, not wanting to move thing that it was doing. Just make sure that all that's cleaned off. And that's it. Set that off to the side. And that's basically it. That's pretty much everything besides the valve retainer, the eye wire, and the valve. And then there is one more part, which is the front plug. And, I mean, your feed neck, but you don't really ever have to pull your feed neck off. So that's pretty much it internally, aside from the valve, which we will now pull out. There is a valve retainer. It is kind of a pain to get out of there if you don't really know how. That's how I've been getting it out. It's probably the wrong way. I'm probably violating some kind of torque owner rule or something. But that's basically how I get mine out. Put the needle nose in there, spread it, pull it. And then I use an Allen key to push the front plug out. And out comes the front plug. And then you can use the back side of your spool and then use your actual spool guide carefully push the valve out and get your eye wire out of the way you don't want to like force it out of the way just be really careful because you don't want to tear your eye wires and then out comes your valve and that'll just slide out the front and that's it 
that is your entire torque ripped apart into tiny pieces, never to be put back together again properly. So, a couple of things that I did when I put mine in, or when I put mine back together, that were incorrect. The first thing you need to do is you actually need to make sure that you put your eye wires in before you put your valve body in. If you don't, you can't get your eye wires in. Just plain and simple. Also with this, I put mine in backwards. It seems like it's not possible, but I somehow did it. The two O-rings here actually go towards the back. There's a lip there that stops it. Um, and yeah, I, I put mine in backwards the first time. So I was just sitting there wondering like, why the fuck isn't this thing going back together? It's because I was trying to put it in this way because I thought this was actually what made it against there but it's not. There is a nylon bushing right there, which there's some nastiness, that's actually used as a spring bumper. So make sure whenever you put your valve body back in that it goes back in this way. Two O-rings towards the back, one O-ring towards the front. Hold on, I got a text message here. Go away. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the torque back together. Grab a paper towel because we're going to clean up and uh, relube everything. Oh boy, that path's starting to kick in. So we'll wipe this guy down. And just a real quick, kind of how the marker works, is this is how it sits inside of the body, like that. So, usually, well this is how it sits kind of, I, I don't want to say at rest, but this is more or less how it sits at rest. It probably sits out about that far. So whenever the marker cycles, the spool comes forward, opens up towards the back here, about that far. Probably a little bit less than that actually. And then as the pressure decreases on this side, spring tension kicks in and actually shuts the valve. Which is why I say it's a lot like a, a forward air spring on return or a phaser. Um, in that it uses a spring to actually shut the valve. So, that more or less is how the marker sits internally. That's semi sort of how the thing goes together, or how the marker is configured internally. So, we will take some. Where's that pathogen? Pathogen super grease here. I want to use this. Man, why am I shaking so bad today? Mm. Increase up the earrings here. Okay. And like I said, you have two earrings going towards the back. And you have to be really careful. This is kind of a sharp lip here, so just make sure that you don't accidentally slice an O-ring on that. It is possible, so just be really careful when you insert. Make sure that you don't have any nicks, scratches, or anything like that. Going to take the back side of... Oops, I actually made my own mistake already. I forgot to put the eye wire back in. So I'm just going to push the valve forward enough to... Let the eye wires in, and you need to make sure that it is with the small side facing up, so it goes in this way. And whenever you do this, make sure to grab it both ends, pull it taut, not too terribly tight, but basically don't let the valve body catch it. So pull it kind of like that, and delicately with the back side of that, push it forward. Make sure that you can actually still move your eye wires, which we can. That's it. So then we need to line up the valve body, which is very important. Okay, now something else that I need to mention is the valve retainer. There are two sides. There's a long side and a short side. It's probably not going to want to focus. 
but the short side is what actually has the o-ring. I made the mistake thinking the long side did, so I was putting this in upside down um, with the o-ring on the long side. The o-ring needs to be facing up towards the body because that's the main ceiling point for this part of the body. So make sure that you have the long side going down and you'll know that you have your valve lined up properly if it will just slip right in. This one is not currently sat properly, now it is. To get the o-ring on there, it is a bit of a challenge because it is just a compression fit. It is gonna wanna slip off of there. So you have to basically kind of take your time and work it onto the valve retainer. Just carefully get it on there. If you're really careful, you don't let that just slip off. A little bit of grease on that guy. Now, for my sanity, I'm just gonna set that down like that. Take the main top body here. We're gonna put the board on, carefully slotting the eyes into the two ridges and slots milled for them. Carefully drop those guys. Oops, come on. In like that. Take your one tiny little screw. Drop her down on there. And again, you don't want to like He-Man the screw on there. But you do want to make sure that it's on there. And one of these is not sitting right. Which one's not sitting right? There we go. Am I not using the right? I don't think I'm using the right Allen key. Which one is it? Green? No, I'm using the right Allen key. Do I just not have the right screw? No, I got the right screw. Okay. Get it down on there and make sure that the eyes are actually in place properly. And give her a little snug. You don't want to go crazy. This is still a board and you don't want to actually crack it. Okay. Now it gets a little weird. So, gonna make sure that I put my friggin' eye wire in upside down like an idiot. Haha. <laughs> See, this is the kind of thing that actually happens. And it's mildly annoying, but that's okay. Oh, wait, we gotta pull the retainer out. Just goes to show, even those of us with a slight inclination to technology, we aren't impervious to mistakes. It happens. It's really easy to get this body mixed up, whether it be forwards or backwards. So take this guy, drop, feed that guy in like that. Get up there, you, like that. And again, pull this forward, or pull these over to the side. Carefully push making sure that we're not catching wires anywhere, which I don't think we are. We might be just a little bit. There we go. Pull these guys backwards. There we go. Pull those up. And carefully push the valve back in place. There we go. And again, like I said, once that's in there, that's not coming out. Let's push that up. Then we take our valve retainer. Again, making sure the long side is facing down. Just like that. Well, a little crooked. There we go. Take the O-ring, place the O-ring on. This is a size 012 O-ring. It's a standard size. And you're going to have to fight it to get it to stay because it is a tension fit. Just like that. Okay. Now, take the eye wire. Hook it into the eye board. Pull the slack carefully. And make sure you have grease on that O-ring. Make sure that your plug is in place. Make sure your, grease, your plug has grease. Slot that guy in there like that. And you have to make extra, extra freaking sure that your 
plug is lined up properly or else it does that. It doesn't want to go back together. So what, we, what they recommend you do is take an Allen key and just make a circle. That should get it to sit properly. Which mine is still not want to. Make sure we're not pinching anything here. causing this to not sit right. It's kind of what it was doing the last time. It was kind of wanting to seesaw. And I did something and it wanted to sit properly and I don't really know what it was. What to say is that retainer. Got to be really, really careful when we do this because it was seesawing the last time I did it, but it went together okay. So we'll just kind of have to make sure that we're not pinching anything whenever the time comes to actually torque stuff down. Yeah, just like that. That's how it was before. Strangely enough, I don't really know why it does that, but it does. So that's just one thing. It's something I don't personally care for, but it does that. Um, no matter what I adjust, what I change, everything's in there properly. So it just kind of is what it is. So once we have all that together, we can now turn our focus back to the switch. Which is very, very simple to put back together. Swap this guy out. Make sure there's no debris or anything like that in there. Take your switch. Now, you don't want to like flood this with grease, but you do want to use a pretty generous amount. Because this is, like I said, basically what makes the gun work. Um, and you don't want these O-rings seizing. So we'll take that. Now when you put this back in, you want the hole in the switch to be facing the cap. So push that guy in, push it down, drop your spring in, like that. And for posterity and security sake, I'm going to put a tiny dab of blue Loctite on my cap because mine came loose and it actually caused the marker to stop working. So just for my sanity, I'm going to put, literally, I'm just going to put, like, I don't know, one thread's worth of tight in there and start to thread her down take our allen key here give her a little push and torque her down you don't want to go super tight because if you strip that out you're never going to get it out again so just make sure you get it on there tightly a little bit of loctite will stop it from coming loose and you should be good to go on that now, we just need to make sure that we find the other O-ring, wherever that guy went, which is right there. A little bit of this pathogen. Since this isn't a moving part, we don't need performance grease, good lord. And then your solenoid goes on one way. It has to meet this way. The holes line up, there's only two holes, so that kind of helps. Making sure to also not let these two O-rings up here run rampant. So what I like to do is take the two screws from the solenoid. Come on, get on there you. And we will thread those guys down. Are the right screws, aren't they? I believe they are. Yeah, there we go. And for some reason, that screw slipped, so now I'm afraid that I actually had an O ring come off. So I'm going to carefully pull this guy off. Yep, we had an O ring slip, so make sure. These guys go back where they're supposed to go and try it again. Ok, 
Come on, buddy. They're very simple guns to work on. It's just the tiny little things that will kind of give you a little bit of hell. There we go. Trying to make sure these are actually going on the right way. There's only one way they can go on, so I don't know why it's wanting to give me a little bit of guff now. There we go. Take our other two screws here. Drop those guys in again. Make sure there's not. Make sure that those two O-rings are sitting. And again, this can only go on one way. They're indexed. So there's two raised tabs, two cut recesses. It'll go on like so. And you want to make sure that these get tightened down evenly. You don't want to accidentally torque one down more than the other. It's like that. And your switch and your solenoid to put back on. Okay. Now, we can put the frame back together and then get everything put back together. So we'll set these off to the side. Want to take the regulator here. There's plenty of grease on those O-rings. Believe me, there's way more than there genuinely needs to be needs to be but that's okay so take those make sure to drop both of your screws okay damn things take I usually like to make sure I put the screws back in where they came from so the mildly stripped one was kind of in the front I'll need to go to Lowe's and try to find a replacement one of these days take the back one set him in like that then carefully start to thread these down. Get them just hand tight. We'll torque them down whenever we get both of them hand tight. That way we make sure we get pressure even. Just like that. Make sure that your Allen key gets a firm seat in the screw. And give her a little tighten. Again, you want to make sure that does not come loose or you're going to have a bad time. that on there. Now we can put the battery tray back in. You want to put the battery tray back in before you put the back plate in because it's, you can't really do it one way or the other but actually we do need to make sure that it's going to sit properly. It sits kind of at a weird wobbly angle and it's kind of annoying but that's okay. So here's where a major headache comes into play and that is the buttons. The buttons are going to want to fall out at every freaking chance they can get. So make sure that they're set up this way. Hold your batteries in place. There is a tab at the bottom, kind of right there, or a slot at the bottom and there's a tab at the bottom of your back plate. I lean my back plate backwards, tab it in, push it forward. And as you can see, the buttons are going to want to try to fall out. And that's just a thing. You're just going to kind of have to fight with it, and uh, it'll eventually go together. There are a couple weird little quirks and things to the, to the torque that kind of make it a bit of a pain. But honestly, it's not horrible. So what I'm actually going to do in order to keep those buttons from falling out again is put the board in. I'm going to go ahead and just drop the board in because the buttons are going to be held in place by the actual buttons on the board. Assuming you can get the plate in without everything just falling apart. So that's half the battle. Okay. Once we got all that in, we can turn it. Okay, I actually found it. It actually wasn't as small as I thought it was. I thought it was one of the super tiny ones, but it's actually not. So there we go. 
and that'll hold the batteries in place. And now we can put our board screws in. Which are these guys. And again, you want to kind of be methodical with how you put these in. You don't want to torque one down more than the other or tighten one all the way down because then you may need to make adjustments and you're not able to. So just carefully slip those guys in. And of course it's not the right one. Okay, those are all hand tight. Start with the back guy here, front and the bottom. Make sure those are good and tight. You don't want those coming loose. And that's your frame put back together aside from your grips. So we're gonna basically put everything back on the top body that we can. So we're going to go ahead and put the detents back in and we'll put the eye covers back on. Actually, we will wait to put the eye covers back on because if they don't go back on quite right when we torque this down, we're going to have some problems with the uh, top body not wanting to go back together right. So put that together like that. Okay, now we get the fun task of putting everything, the frame, back together. So with my torque, whenever it came in, it had a piece of black tape holding the eye wires in place. Uh, unfortunately, since this marker is like three or four years old, um, the tape had basically lost all of its adhesive property and um, it wasn't working too well. So I had to pull it off and now we're just gonna kind of feed it in, hope it works. So the hardest part is getting the solenoid in while also fighting the eye wires because the eye wires wanna go one way. I'm trying not to bend anything that doesn't need to be bent. Grab my ring pick here and see if we can get a hook on that without breaking it. Come on, buddy. Work with me here. There we go. Okay. Kind of work our way in, trying not to crush any wires, anything like that. So the hardest part is you're fighting with the housing of the solenoid against the body and it's creating a lot of friction that typically shouldn't be there but for whatever reason it is as long as your eye wires are in our little channel you shouldn't have any issues come on buddy why are you giving me shit there we go Making a little bit of progress. Make sure we're not pinching anything, which doesn't look like we are. There we go. Make sure your micro switch still clicks. It's a really tight fit, and that's that drives me nuts, but it just it kind of is what it is. So we're gonna go ahead and hook the batteries in first. Because we're gonna need to make sure that we didn't accidentally break any wires. Assuming we put everything back together, we shouldn't have. Okay, batteries are back in. Make sure the board turns on. Which it does, it's not reading any eyes right now. Okay. Now, plug the eye wires back in. Have to kind of go around the battery. Okay, see it turns green, red, green. Okay, that means that the eyes are functioning properly. Plug the solenoid back in. As you can hear, it's not clicking. Okay, everything is working as it should. Turn the eyes off. Everything works how it should, so we'll go ahead and shut the board off. And we're going to tuck the solenoid wire up behind the solenoid. Make sure this guy is out of the way of any screws or anything like that. And now we need to put 
frame screws back in. So once again, we're just gonna make sure that these go down, they're hand tight, we're not gonna try and torque them, anything like that. But this kind of not being exactly perfect, it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of force needed, but that's okay. One way you know that your screws and stuff are a little mixed up is if your trigger doesn't want to return. Don't really know why that has an effect on the trigger, but it does. So, torque the back screw down. That's good. Torque the front. Still good. A little more. Still good. We're still good. Okay, everything's back together how it should be. Damn, this is already an hour long. Holy crap. Now, the eye covers, they go one way. There's a chamfer on the front, and that's the way that it needs to sit. So you'll pop that guy back on there. Take one of these super tiny screws, super tiny Allen key, and tighten your eye cover down. Flip it over. Same thing. Eye cover, super tiny screw. that anymore try to clean up some of the stuff that's in the way okay so now we can put the grips back on Okay, buddy, what's up? There we go. Torque this guy down. Come on, pal, get in there. And the last one. Now, all we gotta do is re-grease the drive. And again, the hands are shaking for whatever reason. Make sure we get plenty of grease. With this being completely aluminum. Wanna make sure we get plenty of grease on here, that way there's not a lot of wear due to metal on metal contact. Slide that guy in like that. Grease here, grease here, grease here. Shaky hands, grease there. Okay. That guy in like that. Thread her down just like so. You don't have to go like hand, like super crazy He-Man strength on that. Just hand tight's good. Pop your bolt up. You'll know you got the bolt in place whenever it wants to stop right there because you're having to fight that super strong spring. That's it. So that is the entire teardown of the J4 Torque minus a couple little things here and there that don't really need to be torn apart. Um, which was the ASA because we didn't need to tear it apart. Um, trying to think, was there anything else that we didn't need to really pull apart? I don't really think there was. Um, and the trigger. The trigger, it's literally the two set screws, one right here, one right here. 
Um, just loosen them up, the trigger should just fall out the front, and you can clean it, replace it, do whatever you want to, um, and you should be good to go. Just make sure whenever you actually put it back in, you want to make sure that your trigger is centered in the trigger frame. That way you don't accidentally have any weird trigger binding or anything like that. So that's the whole video. I apologize that it's an hour and probably 15 minutes long by now. Um, it is a long one. It does take a little bit of patience to get one of these apart and back together. But once you do it a couple times, you can usually figure it out pretty easily. There's just a couple of weird little tricky things here and there. Mainly the valve, that stupid retainer thing. And then trying to make sure that you don't crush your solenoid and spool housing, trying to put the frame back on. But that's the whole video. I appreciate everybody for watching. Again, thank you for the continued support. If you're going to be at Jaggers on October 17th, 16th? I don't remember. I'll, I'll put up a flyer in the beginning or something. Um, if you're going to be at Jaggers Battle for Earth, I will be there. I will have this. I will have the Impulse. Um, and I will be playing for the Martians as I usually do. Um, so if you see me, come up, say hi, ask for one of the stickers because I will have some with me. And uh, I'll give you one. So I do appreciate everybody for watching and have a good evening.